Hello, future legends of the App Store. This is Prof G, and welcome back to our continuing adventures in learning to program using Swift for iOS development. Now, at the end of the last video, we provided you with a challenge, which asks you to create a new app named Two Button Challenge. It should have two buttons. The first one should say Show Message. When you click on Show Message, it should say You Are Awesome. The second button should say Show Another Message. And when you click on that, it should say You Are Great. Now, in this video, not only are we going to solve the challenge, but we're also going to introduce some new concepts and go beyond the challenge. So we'll talk a little bit about text color. We'll introduce the UI color type and you'll use that to change the text color. And then we'll have yet another challenge where you take what you've learned about types and you'll see if you can figure out how to use the NS text alignment type to vary the text alignment in your message label. So now let's make sure that you got your code buttoned up and we'll learn some more concepts. So first up, we're gonna create a project called two button challenge. So I'm gonna launch Xcode. We're gonna say create new Xcode project. It'll be an iOS project, single view app, click on next. I'll call this two button challenge. And if you named it differently, don't worry about that. There is some information on how to rename projects in the reference section of your online text. If you don't have the online text, you can find out more information about how to get that in gallagher.com slash Swift. But the project name isn't important for the challenge. Also make sure that your language is Swift and your user interface is storyboard. Click on next. Make sure that create Git repository is also selected. I'm gonna save mine to the desktop as well, right next to you are awesome to keep that project company. Click create, expand my window and we're ready to work. Now we're gonna work off the main storyboard first. So click main storyboard in the project navigator. Now I've been building off of the smallest iPhone that will run iOS 13. So I'm gonna do the same in this project at the bottom of my canvas. I'm gonna click on view as and make sure that I've clicked on the little image of the iPhone SE. Now we're gonna introduce a label. So I'm gonna click on plus up here, go to the object library. Label is right up top. I'm gonna to drag over, position the upper left-hand corner of the label in the upper left-hand corner of the margin of the view controller's main view. And we see these handy blue lines that are margin positioning guides to help us out. Let go. I didn't specify any guidelines for label size or attribute, but I'll click the lower right label handle and drag. Notice my width and length show up in the upper left-hand corner. I'm gonna to drag to a width of about 100. You can let go to set the dimensions, but if you want more accuracy, remember this little ruler in the upper right-hand corner, that's the size inspector. I'm gonna click there and change my height to 150, press enter to change the label height. Now I'm gonna click back on the attribute inspector, this downward pointing arrow. I'm gonna change the font by clicking on the little T icon to the right of the font attribute. That'll bring up this additional dialogue. I'm gonna click on font, select custom. I'm partial to Avenir Next Condensed, so I'm gonna select that font. I'm gonna make this font bold, so I'll click on style and select bold. Your styles will be limited based on what's available for the font family. I'll type 36 into the size box and press enter to set the size nice and big. I'm gonna double click the label and type you are awesome to add the text to the label. I'll click on the center alignment icon to center it, and I'll click color and select the previous color of Boston College Maroon. The alignment looks funky, but I'll just click on the gray space outside of the view controller and all my changes are accepted. You are awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and add my two buttons. Now let me show you a few things about the behavior of the object library. I'm gonna click plus to show the object library. Now I'm gonna click and drag the button object, but watch what happens when I do that. The object library window goes away. Sometimes you want the object library window to stay. For example, that would be handy if you were dragging over a bunch of user interface objects. So I'll show you how you can keep the object library window open. And to demonstrate that, I'll drag over two buttons, one after the other. So I don't want this button. I'm just going to drag it off of the canvas, let it go up here in the menu bar so it's not added. If you've already added the button, you can just click on it again and press the delete key to get rid of it. Now to keep the library open, I'm going to hold down the option key while clicking on the plus icon, which opens the library. And look at how the library window has changed. We've now got these traffic lights in the upper left hand corner. The window will stay open until you close it. So now when I drag over a button and drop it on the canvas, the library window is going to stay open. So I'll drag over my second button, plop that to the right. And when you're done with the object library, you can just click on your red traffic light to close. Want the keyboard shortcut to pull up the object library? That's shift command L. Now this is the library window that disappears when I drag an item over. Want the keyboard shortcut to show the object library with that title bar so that it doesn't go away? I'll first click outside this object library to make it go away. And I'll bring up this persistent library window with shift command option L. And if you've never noticed this weird symbol, it looks like a down escalator is on your option key. But I'll red traffic light this library window. I don't need it right now. Now notice in our object hierarchy over here in the document outline, we've got all of the items that we dragged on our user interface. And you can click on any of these to select them. I'll show you another quick shortcut to duplicate items on the user interface. First, let's click the second button, press the delete key to get rid of it. You can click on any element in the user interface like this first button here, press command D, that's for duplicate. You've just created another copy. Now, one thing to be aware of, if you duplicate any of the objects on your interface builder, you're also gonna duplicate any connections to the Swift file. So you probably don't wanna use the duplicate shortcut if you've already connected that object to an IB outlet or an IB action. 
I've seen new developers duplicate an item and then not realize why their code was treating two objects as a single outlet or a single action. So now that we've covered some tips and shortcuts, I'm gonna move the left button over to the left margin, double click on it and change the button title to show message. And notice when I do that, it aligns a little bit to the left. So I'll drag over here to the right. And now I'll double click the second button on the right, change the title to show another message. And I'll position this so the right side of the button is even with the right margin. And my label's right side isn't quite at the right margin of my view controller. So I'll stretch that out a little more. And now to wire everything up, what we want to do is get into assistant editor mode. So I'm going to click on view controller then option click on main storyboard. We need to create an IV outlet for the label. And the reason why we need to do that is because we're gonna be programmatically changing the text attribute of this label. If we don't create the outlet, then our Swift code doesn't know that outlet exists and we can't change anything in it. So label, let's get you connected to our Swift code. I'm just gonna control drag over. It's an outlet, I'll use lower camel case. We'll call this message label again and click connect. Now I also need to create IB actions. I'm gonna create one for my show message button and another for my show another message button. So I'll control drag over. I'm gonna let go just before the last curly brace. So it's inside of the class, but we're not creating the action inside of the function. You wanna make sure that it's even with the other functions. It is an action. I'm gonna set my type to UI button. We don't have to do that, but it's good practice. Keep touch up inside. And I'm gonna call this one show message pressed. Click on connect. And I'm gonna create another one down here. Clicking from the second button, control dragging over, and we'll call this one show another message pressed. And we're gonna make sure that this is a UI button and click connect. Now we want this app to update the message labels text attribute to say you are awesome when you click on show message. So I'm gonna click and position my cursor just after the first curly brace that starts the show message pressed function. I'm gonna press enter to give myself space for a new line. And I'll type in the first few letters of message label and code completion will pop up. Now Xcode knows a bunch of different statements that actually have a message in them. But what I see up top is this IB outlet that I've just created named message label. To the left, I see a V that means it's a variable. That means I can change its contents. And to the left of message label, I see that it says UI label. That's the type. It says, hey, this thing called message label, this variable is a user interface label. So if message label is a big variable, like a big box that contains all of the data related to the variable, I wanna get into that little box that specifically has the string that shows up as the text inside of the label. So remember we use dot notation for that. I'm gonna press dot. I'll start typing in text. And as soon as I type in TEX, I see code completion pop up again. I see the property text shows up. It's a variable of type string. I see the description up top that says the current text that is displayed in the label. This is exactly what I want. And before I press enter to accept this, I wanna point out two other properties that we see in here. There's text alignment and text color. Now in the same way that we can change the text, we can change these properties too. And we'll come back and do that after we finish this solution. But right now let's press enter to accept the text property. We'll use equal, which is our assignment operator. It just creates an equation and it takes anything on the right-hand side of the equal sign and puts it in the left-hand side of the equal sign. So to the right of the equal sign, we're gonna put in the string in double quotes because all strings are in double quotes. You are awesome, exclamation point. Now we wanna do the same thing for this IB action function that's show another message pressed. So if I click right after the curly brace that starts this function, press enter, I can copy this line up here that sets the message label dot text to you are awesome. I can highlight the text that I change it to and I can type in you are great exclamation point. Now before I build and run, I'm gonna do two things. First, I'm gonna set my scheme to iPhone SE. And before I build, I'm gonna double click on my label backspace over and press enter so that there's nothing in my message label when I start. Now I'll go ahead and build and run. Build succeeded, launching. And I'll speed up the app launch so you don't have to wait. Here's my app, I see two buttons, I see nothing in the label, I click on show message, you are awesome, I click on the second message, you are great, you are awesome, you are great, you are awesome, you are great, you are both of these things, we just finished the challenge. But now let's extend our knowledge. What I'm gonna do is get back into Xcode, click on stop, hide my main storyboard, and get back into our code. Now we're gonna learn how we can actually change the color of the text. Now remember, text color is just an attribute, and I'll show you how we can find that. If I press enter after the you are awesome in show message pressed and type in message label, code completion will pop up message label. It knows that it exists. I'll press enter. I'll type in dot 
And even if we don't know that there's this attribute called text color, we might wonder, hmm, how can I manipulate the color? So if I type in color, look what shows up here. These are all the things in a UI label that have the word color in the name. The reason why it limits it to the properties in UI label is because message label is a UI label. So Xcode helps us out here and only shows us the stuff in dot notation that relates to the type of the object to the left of the dot. The thing to the left of the dot is message label. That's of type UI label. And Xcode's code completion is telling us that UI labels have a text color, a background color, a tint color, a shadow color. Or if I typed in text, notice what we saw before. We see text alignment and text color. I want text color. I think if I move my cursor down, I can see that I've highlighted text color. And the description of this property at the bottom says the color of the text. Now, something else I want you to pay attention to. When we selected text, the text property is of type string. So we enclosed the message inside of double quotes. That's how we write a string. This one says it's UI color. Hmm, I wonder how we can put a color in there. Let's press enter. Now, I'm going to say equal sign here, and I wonder if I could do this. If I say equal sign R-E-D and close that with a double quote. Let's see if Xcode will accept this. It'll think for a bit, and then it gives me an error here. It says, cannot assign the value of string to type UI color. Remember how this was of type string, and this one is of type UI color. By the way, there's a way that we can check to see what the type of different variables are. We can hold down the option key and click on the name. So I'm going to option click on text, and notice what happens. It shows, it says it's a variable text is of type string. What happens if I option click on text color? Well, it should be showing that this is of type UI color, but sometimes Xcode is a little bit temperamental. So if we remember that this is a UI color, the question is, how can we assign a UI color, and let's pick a color like blue, to the text color property of message label? Well, I'm going to backspace over red, which was written as a string in between quotes. And here's a trick. If you type in UI color, which is the type, some types have dot notation that will show you specific values associated with that type. So if I say UI color dot, now I see a bunch of things in here, but down below if I scroll, I can see black, blue, brown, clear, cyan, whoa, let me try blue. Now I can either use the arrow keys to select blue or start to type in the word blue. It says a color with the RGB value and it tells me what the values are for blue. If you care about RGB values, we won't worry about that. We just know that blue is blue. So we're gonna press enter here and we've just set the text color property to the UI color blue. Hey, let's change the label to red when you click on show another message. So you are awesome is blue, you are great is red. I can just copy this line here, command C, paste it in down here, backspace over blue, type dot and red. Now there isn't a predefined value for all of the colors, but there are for some of the major colors in here. And with iOS 13, not only is there a red, but there's also something called system red. So we'll select system red just to check that out. By the way, here's another tip. Sometimes you don't even have to put the name of the type over here on the left-hand side. So if I backspace over UI color and put in a dot, I'll see all of the UI colors that are predefined in iOS. And do we have system red in here? I can scroll down to try to find it, but I can also type SYS, and these are all the system colors that were included with iOS 13. So I'll select system red. Let's build and run and check out what our code does. I'm expecting show message blue, show another message red, build succeeded. Let's click show message. It's in blue, you are awesome. What happens when we click on show another message? It's in red, it's in blue, it's in red, it's in blue, it's in red. Now remember, I initially set up this label to have the color of Boston College maroon. But we don't see that because initially we don't have any text inside of the text attribute for this label. Once we click on one of the buttons though, we assign one of these two colors to the label and it will keep that color until we click on the other button and it assigns the other color. Nice work. Now I'm gonna give you another super quick challenge to see if you can apply what we just learned about types and predefined values for those types. I'm gonna get back into Xcode. I'm gonna click on stop and it's time for another challenge. So what I want you to do is to update your Swift code so that when the user clicks on the show message button, the text is aligned to the left. And when the user clicks on show another message, the text is aligned to the right. Now, we haven't worked with text alignment before, but when we used code completion, you saw that there was a text alignment attribute. Also pay attention to what we learned about types and dot notation. I bet you can figure this out on your own. Now, just to make sure that you can see the alignment, you'll wanna go into Interface Builder and use the Attributes Inspector to set the font for message label to a smaller point size, like 24. So give this a shot, Coder. Hopefully you feel your app building skills are increasing and you'll find a solution to this challenge video in the questions area of the chapter section. Good luck and keep at it.